Now that we have some idea about the difference between a function and a discrete set of points, let's explore the difference a little more closely. A function is a mathematical relation that takes a single input and returns one thing back to you. You use these in math class all the time, and I'm sure you've seen your math teacher write f parenthesis of x a bajillion times um, over the study of mathematics. And so here I've taken a function of of x, and here it is, uh, 2 times x squared plus 4, and I can tell you Mathematica input that. And it does input that. Mathematica has a couple of quirks and with regards to syntax and then order of outputs. Um, these aren't terribly important, and once we sort of get with the flow with it, it's not as unusual as it seems in the beginning. All right, so what does it mean that I have a function? It should mean that if I say, take f of a single thing, say 2, it should return one thing to us. And it does. It returns the one thing 12. But Mathematica is not terribly picky about what I give to it. For example, I could give it an irrational number, say pi. All right, and I input pi, and it will square pi very happily, but didn't return us a number. Mathematica will always give you what it thinks is the most exact answer. In this case, not squaring pi gives you a much more exact answer than actually squaring it out. But we can force Mathematica to say, no, no, give me a decimal, and it will. If you make it, it will return a, a less exact number to you. But also, there's no reason why we have to limit ourselves to numbers at all. We can simply put a variable in there. Um, and Mathematica will take that variable and square it. Now, it won't reduce. There's no reduction for this um, because we haven't told Mathematica what time is. But in another video, we talk more about um, naming variables and how to use that to your heart's content. Now, in physics, we really want the name to reflect what the function does. The name f doesn't tell us anything. It says function. It's like saying your name was human. It doesn't help you very much. All right, so displacement is a very specific mathematical term, and it has a physical meaning as well. So this will help us to explore things. And again, instead of using x's and y's, which don't necessarily mean anything as opposed to being Cartesian coordinates, here we're going to use uh, v for velocity, t for time, a for acceleration, and a lot of the variables will make sense. Some unfortunately won't, but most of them make sense. And again, I can say Mathematica, um, hold on to that, and it will. And then again, the quirk of Mathematica is it multiplied out our fraction and put things in what it felt was alphabetical order, so A came first. Now the question is, is, is this a function? So displacement of one number should return one thing back, and it doesn't quite return one thing back because there are these two other letters in there, these two other variables. And so if I were to tell Mathematica, oh, well, A is negative 9.8 meters per second squared, the acceleration of gravity on planet Earth, and our initial velocity, let's say we throw it upwards at 10 meters per second. No, well, it doesn't really matter. It's picked something else. Now, if we said, what's the displacement um, two seconds later? And it tells us we've gone 0.4 meters. It does indeed return in, in a thing back to us. Now, Mathematica will not graph a variable. It can only graph an actual number or a series of numbers. So when we put units in, that's very helpful physics-wise. It helps us sort of understand the meaning of things and check our work and make sure we've remembered everything. When we go to graph things, that's not terribly helpful. So. Uh, that's a thing to keep in mind as we move forward. And so you notice here, when I've gone to define the acceleration and the velocity, I didn't use um, the units in this case, and that's sort of important. So we can graph that over the whole range, and there they all are. There are all the points from 0 to 10 seconds later of our object, assuming we actually had a pit that was 350 meters deep, and we could see all of the points that were in there.